Hello, I'm Salim Mohammed, and welcome back to the next technology overview session. In today's session, we will be covering some of the commonly used naming, naming convention as well as uh, terminology in FC and FCOE networks. Um, I have drawn a couple of diagrams here, one depicting uh, FC network and another one showing an FCOE uh, environment. Um, I'm going to walk you guys through different uh, names for the switches, their ports, adapters, etc. And hopefully it will uh, you know, explain a few things as, uh, as you get comfortable with this. So looking at the FC environment, uh, we have a server, just like in previous example, uh, I'm showing two HBAs colored in blue and red. Um, we have a storage target uh, or storage array that has been introduced in this picture as well. Um, storage also just like uh, a server has um, you know, two ports, one to connect to fabric A, the other one to connect to fabric B. As you can see in this example, I have only shown uh, switches in blue color because I want to build out a fabric, uh, just one single fabric. Uh, second fabric or the redundant fabric will look exactly like this one, so there is no point in drawing and complicating the picture here. Um, the other thing to note here is um, I've shown three switches here. This is uh, intentional uh, because in a typical FC environment, three-tiered um, architecture is very common. What do we mean by three-tiered architecture? Uh, is the edge one of the edge switches connects to uh, you know servers connect to one of the edge switches edge switch then connects to a core switch and then core switch connects to a different edge switch where all of the storage is connected this is, this is a fairly common uh, deployment uh, type in uh, FC environments now coming back to this um, as I said we are showing one one of these fabrics the way the fabric will get built out is um, HPA that is going to be connected to fabric A is going to connect to edge switches, right? Edge switch is connected to a core switch, core is connected to another edge, and that edge switch is connected to fabric A port of the, uh, of the storage. Another thing to keep in mind here is in storage world, server side is commonly referred to as initiator, and storage side is commonly referred to as target. Um, the other thing I would like to point out is um, we have shown one of the fabrics and as I said the redundant fabric is going to be fabric B. Collection of these two fabric forms um, a SAN. Now just like in an Ethernet world you have LAN and VLAN, in the SAN world also we have a SAN and a vSAN, a virtual SAN. Uh, this term is, uh, or, or feature I should say, is uh, introduced by Cisco. And uh, it, just like VLAN, it allows customers to create multiple SANs in, an ex in, in, a, in a single switch. Uh, Brocade, which is one of the uh, leading vendor in FC, uh, um, FC switching industry, uh, is not completely bought into vSAN philosophy. Their philosophy is that customers, in order to benefit from reliability and redundancy, uh, resiliency in an FC fabric, they should maintain completely physically separate fabrics. They should not create redundancy by using the vSAN kind of a concept on, on the same physical switch. Now, let's go back to the uh, server side. And in last session, I mentioned that on, on, on a typical server, we have a NIC, it could be 10 gig, one gig, uh, one, two or more. And we have HBAs, host bus adapters. NICs are connected to LANs. Uh, using Ethernet, HBAs, host bus, host bus adapters are connected to FC fabric. Um, when we shift gear towards um, FC network, both of these functionalities, functionalities are converged in an adapter called CNA, Converged Network Adapter, which is sh shown here in the picture. Stepping back uh, to the FC world, uh, in an FC environment, server port is called an end port node port, um, switch side uh, or, the, or the port of the switch which is connected to the end port is referred to as fabric port or F port. The port which is connected to another FC switch is called E port and this is another E port, E port um, and on this edge switch we have F port because this is connected to the end port which is represented by this storage target. Another thing to note here is that 
e-port to e-port connection has a, a unique identity in FC world and uh, it is called uh, an inter switch link and we'll cover more about this in detail uh, in uh, future sessions. Now coming to an FCOE environment, um, we have a server with a couple of CNAs which will be connected to an FCOE enabled switch. From FCOE we are going back to FC switch 2 exactly the same as represented here and FC switch 3 which will be connected to this storage port. So I am intentionally drawing this because I want to make, make sure that this is clear that server and the switch on the server side are being replaced by FCOE enabled server and the switch but that switch FCOE switch is connecting to an existing FC SAN or FC fabric as shown here. These ports will be referred to as E ports. I'm just going to label it as E. This port, just like in previous example, will be called an F port. This port, like in previous example, will be called an N port. However, uh, this link between server CNA and FCOE switch will have a different name, slightly different name I should say. Uh, this port which is connected to the server is going to be called a VF port and the CNA port will be referred to as VN port. Now let's talk about different names of switches in an FCOE environment because that's really important and, some, and perhaps confusing uh, to some as well. Uh, you will commonly see or hear about the term FCF or fiber channel forwarder. Fiber channel forwarder is an FCOE switch that is able to perform login services and other FC services and it may also have ability to encapsulate and decapsulate um, frames that are going from FCOE environment into fiber channel and, uh, and vice versa as well. Um, another type of switch that is commonly you know, mentioned in FCOE discussions is a FIP snooping bridge or an FCOE transit switch. Um, FIP snooping bridge or an FCOE transit switch is, um, is a plain Ethernet switch which is inserted between uh, for example a CNA and an FCF. Let's draw it here and we'll call it FSB, FIP snooping bridge. Uh, uh, there is a provision for, the, uh, or I should say, there is a specific requirement uh, that needs to be met by uh, an FSB. It has to support uh, DCB protocols such as PFC, ETS, and DCBX. And in, in addition to that, it should also support dynamic ACLs. That's a requirement uh, based on FCOE standard for it to be called the FIPS looping bridge. Uh, it secures the link uh, between CNA and the FCF. Um, and ensures that you know denial of service attacks or spoofing or those kind of security uh, concerns cannot be uh, uh, are, are not introduced into this environment. Um, from Dell perspective, our S forty eight ten switch, MXL, and IOA are all examples of some of the FIP snooping bridges. Um, one last thing to mention here is um, when we are looking at Deloro numbers or industry referring to different types of uh, you know FCOE switches. Uh, FIP snooping bridge, even though it supports FCOE transit traffic, it is not technically an FCOE switch. Uh, for an FCOE switch, it must support FCF functionality and more importantly, it needs to have the capability you know, to provide services and, and encapsulation and decapsulation services as well. With that, that concludes today's session and uh, please tune back in for the next session for another exciting topic to cover on lands and convergence. Thank you.